What is up? Jay Daniel here with the Sales at Home podcast with my co-host Victor Marshall. Today we got some special guests introducing David and Chance. What's up, guys? How are we doing? Victor, kick it off for us. Yeah, yeah. So we were just kind of chatting before you came up, Jay Daniel. So yeah. as you know, Chance and David, two awesome sales pros in the game. They're coming into the business and they're they're working with these companies, but the two of them got together and they're like, you know what? Let's start a podcast. Great. Let's have them on ours. You know, let's chat with them. Let's, let's see where they're at. Let's understand what's going on. But I'm hearing now they're also starting an offer. Um, they're putting together like a sales training um, really? sales management situation and they're almost finished. They're ready to launch. So I think mm-hmm. it's, it's really cool. It's really exciting. I think these guys are going to kill it, but, uh, yeah, man, let's let's kind of ask them some few questions about their offer and see what they're up to. Yeah, that's freaking dope. Uh, <laughs> what's what's the offer? Like, what are you? Uh, t- tell us more, uh, David. What are you guys yeah. doing? So so pretty much like we we want to come in as a high performance and sales training coaching company. So for any sales rep that is like on an offer. When I'm able to come in, break down every part of the offer, understanding the market, the prospect, the product, the marketing process, sales process, all of that, break it all down and then teach them, you know, what they need to do in terms of sales training and improving their daily habits and routines to be able to perform on a higher level. That's the 10,000 feet of you people. That's awesome. That's yep. sick. So what, what brought you guys together? Chance, like what, what was it that you're like, you know, I got to work with David. I think you're muted, bro. I didn't click mute. Can you hear me? There you go. Yeah, I can hear you. I think I'm muted on my computer. Weird. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was a couple of things, honestly. The the first thing, I think, was the first call that David and I had. Shockingly similar people in terms of our mindsets, how we think, our habits, um, how we act, all of the you know intangibles that it takes to be you know a high achiever. We have an episode about that. Gonna Going to plug that real uh, quick right there. Uh, but we do, um, we just got a lot of common men. And I think David, correct me if I'm wrong here. I think you were the one that brought up the idea of, of partnering, even if it was for just a podcast. And then as our podcast evolved, we were like, Hmm, why don't we like, see if we can come up with a vision and how we can help others. Cause at the core of everything. Um, and I believe David will agree with this. Our, our biggest thing that we talked about at the very beginning was just providing value to both sides, business owners and sales reps, right? We just want to be able to be value in, value out. And um, it's pretty much evolved from there. I mean, I'll let David tell tell his side of the story. Yeah, I mean, it it pretty much evolved from what, um, who Victor and Jay Daniel is working with, which is JD, Mm -hmm. right? So we had this call, right? And we discussed about next level. So with every challenge that JD threw me, I was like, dude, I've already done this. Like, what, what, what next do you have for me? And he, he sat there and I was like, man, I think the missing trait that you ha- that, that that you need to develop is leadership. Like It would be awesome to see you bring others on top of the level you're at and give them the results that you get. It's like, all right, so let's start thinking. Maybe we can do podcasts. Maybe we can um, align values with business owners, sales reps, have all the data, and then we become like the main connecting point. And all of that just develop from there. And um, the vision built on top, the coaching, coach, the coach, everything is just kind of like aligned from mm-hmm. that moment. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember talking to you before on on a video on your channel and you were talking a little bit about, you know, the next level and and rising to the next occasion and finding the next big thing. And so it's pretty cool that, you know, you two aligned. And I mean, I've, I've grown to know both of you separately and I, yeah. I couldn't, I think this is a perfect, perfect marriage, if you will. Um, the two of you coming together just makes sense. You know what I mean? It, it makes sense. And this offer kind of makes sense. And if you think about it, there's a lot of people who coming into an offer don't really, they're they're kind of lost. You know what I mean? They're like deer in the headlights, have no idea what's going on. And what you guys are offering is, is hey, let's focus. Let's learn you know, how to look at this. Let's learn how to evaluate this offer so that you can be a high performer. I love that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, man. I mean, it's um, it's kind of like a missing spear, right? Like there, there, there are 
see see our office a little bit everyone says that my, my offer is a bit different but anyhow <laughs> um like we, we we are mostly targeting people that already have like an offer that hasn't really broken through like the 5k plus range so they have to be on an offer but yeah dude we just want to you know come in show integrity i know people are struggling with sales but i also know people are struggling with offers first of all qualifying offers but also like the marketing you know when 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 i first got, got onto an offer and got my first call i had no idea about the messaging it was such a mm-hmm. messy call but um as i you know trial and error i got more familiar with it so what if we bring that all the way to the top like to the start yeah that's awesome making sure that when you come into something you know exactly why you're there and what to look for and how to familiarize yourself quickly so that way you can scale quickly that's pretty awesome so both of you guys are kind of doing your own thing individually and you're like you know what we've got to I've got, there's the next level right we've been talking a little bit about next level here um in the last couple of episodes and and the personal responsibility that it requires to get to that level and so my question to you guys is this uh, i guess we'll go chance first what do you think is the most important factor when leveling up oh man that's a great question. Wow. Oh, man. I think there's a couple of them, right? So uh, different people level up at different speeds, right? And one of them, I would say, those who don't feel they're leveling up need to look from the outside in, right? So uh, w- one thing I like to do is I like to, you know, A, envision where I want to be, but also B, um, I have this practice I do once a month. And basically it's where was I last month? Hmm. Right. Cause as long as you're doing the right practices, I mean, you're going to be at a better spot and you're going to be able to witness because, you know, we, as sales, sales reps, we get so that's what I'm looking for here. We get so in the trenches, right? Like always trying to improve, doing our day to day networking. There's so much that involved that goes into being a high performing sales rep. That's always leveling up that I feel like a lot of people tend to forget to, just recognize, right? Realize that you are moving the needle forward. And um, then on the other side, right? Um, I, I feel that you should always be obsessed with that next mountain, right? Like, um, Victor, we were talking about that. My my offer a couple offers ago, um, the one that you connected me with, um, I left in like six months and we had talked about it. And it was basically, I was ready for the next, the, the next mountain, right? I was, yeah. I was, I was ready for that new challenge and uh, you encouraged me not to be complacent. And, you know, because I was in a spot where I'd hit all the goals I wanted to on that offer and I'd essentially topped out how the offer was constructed. I was hitting top numbers and it was like, okay, let's, let's move on to the next thing. So, yeah, I I know that was kind of long winded, but I I wanted to tackle both sides, David, I'll let you speak, speak your part there. Yeah. Yeah. Repeat the question for me one one more time. So the question is, what do you think is the most important factor when leveling up? Mm. Man, let's let's see if I can add uh, add something different than than Chaz. I, I know Chaz and I like we we think so so alike. Yeah, that you're pretty much speaking <laughs> with my white twin. Like that's <laughs> on on the side here. So you know, <laughs> that's um. Most important factor when leveling up, it's um, I think like because leveling up obviously means different things for different people. Let's let's take it as like financially leveling up, like you're making more money. I think you should never forget about your values and principles when you are leveling up to the next stage. Meaning, you know, there might be a offer that allows someone to make twenty k a month, and another one that allows someone to make maybe ten or eight. But the 20K a month has, well, maybe too many red flags in integrity or the way they operate, like it's sketchy business. I would rather stick with the 8 to 10K because of the values and principles. And th- this is just um, me because I value integrity over everything else. But if you want to go for the bag, like that's that's totally you. Um, so I'm, I'm a total values and principles guy. Whenever we uh, looked at... The coaching business, I was like, all right, so so we got to align values and principles and um, find our values and principles in those that we want to teach, which is the most important part. And um, 
Ah, uh, I I'm I'm gonna sound like so much of a Jay Daniel fan because I watch so <laughs> many of your videos, man. I watch so much of your videos, and you just have so many videos about values and principles in communication, but also like success principles that you got from your mentors before you even hopped into sales. Hundred percent. Yep. Yeah, we're all Jay Daniel fans. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. It's true though. Um, like it's always the simple things, right? It's the simple things that let you get better. And, um, it's interesting with values as well, because like when I think of values, right, there's like, cause I've been on offers that were shit, bro. In terms of like fulfillment, like I made a bunch of like people, we all made money, but the clients got fucked. You know, I think we've all been yeah. on an offer like that. We've noticed that we got out. Um, I think it's, it's a balance between like, the offer and, and obviously being sold on the offer going into it, but also being strong on your conviction for the clients. And, and so what I mean is like, um, you know how many people talk shit about offers just because they're people who talk shit and hate, you know what I mean? Like that's the, that's one of the biggest things I've seen, like having a brand, like do people talk shit for no reason? And that's who they are. Um, so it's being able to differentiate between like a per, like, like feedback that's constructive, right? And, and, and um, like just people talking and trying to distract you. I, I think the number one success principle is like stay focused. Dude, every billionaire, Bill, uh, I don't know your thoughts on Bill Gates. I don't like the guy, but he's rich, right? So like, th you know, don't throw out the baby <laughs> with the bathwater. And um, <laughs> one thing he says is like, dude, focus. That's the most important commodity, the ability to focus. And I think if you can go into any space, especially sales and go into it with the attitude of focus, you're going to fucking crush it. Hell, look at Chance, bro. Look at you, David. Like, like, like that's one thing I've noticed it's focus, <laughs> you know, you're consistently improving and everybody's talking about you. So I think that's huge. Um, nice. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, 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 I want, yeah, dude. I'm I'm curious too, for you guys, like, what do you think? Um, Cause it's true. Most people go into this space and they <clears> fail, <throat> you know, they're like, Oh, sales isn't for me. I don't want to do it. I sucked. I couldn't make money, blah, blah, blah. Um, aside from focus, just in, in terms of your personal experience, it could be either of you, but what do you think allowed you to kind of rise to the top? Oh, I'll let you tackle this one first, Chance. I, I got my answer. Definitely. So for me, man, um, I would say it's a number of things. I'll try and single it down here. Um, the first thing is mindset, right? So breaking out of the nine to five mindset. And it's something, if, if you go back into my early posts in UCM, it's something that I struggled with a lot to begin with. Because I, I went to college, I got a nine to five, I was your normal society driven, do this till you're 65, maybe retire with a couple mil and then die in like 20 years, right? That was, that was mm -hmm. who I was. Um, it was hard for me to break that, that mindset. I would say that was number one. And then number two was, was getting the, the proper training um, from people who have been there, done that and applying it, right? You gotta, you gotta apply the training. That, that's something I stress on with a lot of early sales reps and people that aren't really um, where they want to be is they may have had training, but they're not applying it, right? So I've I've got a lot more to say on it, but um, I'll, I'll I'll let David tackle tackle his piece here. Yeah, it's a good one. I'd say um, for me, I'd say re relentless, like the energy between like behind is going for it. Because when 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 I I basically got into remote sales after I ran my own business, right, and that was after high school, like right after. So I already lived and, and, and I never had a nine to five, believe it or not. So I've always been okay. in this business journey, Ross. When I got to remote sales, I always knew that, all right, so if I'm not doing anything, I'm not getting paid, right? So the kind of, hey, I'm getting some instructions, but if I don't just go ahead and next year and learn on the way and, you know, learn while I'm being in, in the fire, I'm not going anywhere. So when the sales team lead, kind of like notice that energy in me he just threw me into fucking everything he was like hey here's a list just call him up they've been through our content here's another list hey let's let's get you on discovery calls they get you on closing calls the entire nine months he trained me up and it was just constantly being stressed out in the fire executing mm -hmm. not backing out because i could easily quit but you didn't you know that reminds yeah. me of there, there's a saying bro it's like uh I'm sure maybe you've heard it, right? It's like uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you can you can take a 24 hour period of somebody's life and then 
like look and you can predict very accurately where they're going to be right and i think that like i think the people that kind of have a little fire under the butt and they're doing everything extra kind of like chan said right like you're not just like doing the course like you're 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 not even just applying it right you're really fucking owning it all the guys that i've seen crash it like they they own it like they'll watch the same like 40 times literally 40 times 10 hours of their life watching the same fucking clip because it's not just a clip or how it's done it's like how do they master it you know um you almost have to be like like a here's a quote that i heard here's a quote that i heard right that maybe you resonate with you guys um you have uh you're never going to see a king hanging out with the same people the peasants hang out with maybe he'll spend a second with them right maybe he'll you know like whatever right but he's not going to have the same habits and spend the same time doing the same things they do the way his brain operates is just different right it's built different so um i, I think um in my opinion right if we're talking about like, especially if you want to operate sales at home, because it's very easy to just fuck off and not do much. Right. I'm sure we've all had that moment where we're tired of shit. We're like, Oh dude, I'm still going to make 10 K this month. I'm tired. I could just chill, but you're like, Nope, let's do more. Right. And you do it and you break a record or something. Right. Um, I, I think there's lots to be said about that. And I'll let, I'll let Victor talk. Cause I'm just, yeah. So before you guys even uh, answered the question, I, I had a word in mind for both of you and you know, from my perch, my bird's eye view inside of UCM and, and kind of like the position that I have, I've seen both of you embody this word and that's tenacity. I mean, there's, there's a level of tenacity that you both have that has transcended any excuses, transcended, you know, where you came from, what you used to do. And it's like, I mean, Chance, dude, you hit me up next day you're on an offer. We talk a couple months later and you're like, Hey, I think I've hit this, you know, the top of this offer. I think I need to find something else. I'm like, Hey, I just got a call from somebody else. I'll hook you up with him. And you're in that offer. Like, do you know how many people could have gotten put in that position, but they just did not say anything about it. You know how many people I tried to put in that position just didn't fit. You know what I mean? And, and we had Josh Pineda on here not too long ago and we talked to him and he he's in love with you and 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 yeah and marco and and it all started because you were just like hey i need this i'm gonna go after it and you were tenacious about it and you know david the same way when we met you're like hey i need to talk to you you know let's get on a call let's talk like let's build a relationship let's do this because i'm going somewhere and you look like you're one of those people that can either help me or can give me some advice or have known where I'm going. So let's chat. Let's get, it's just, people don't do that anymore. People expect handouts. They expect to come into the business and they go through a, a six month training program. They're on probation for nine months. You know, they, they get raises every week. Like they're, they're expecting these things. They're expecting their hand to be held, but that's not what this business is. You don't, you don't set records without being tenacious. You don't start your own offer without being tenacious. You don't, you know, partner with people to elevate yourself without being tenacious. You don't do that. And so when Jadan asked the question, the first thing that popped in my head was tenacity. Like both of these guys have it. And I love, I love seeing it. You know what I mean? Cause I get to sit back, you know what I mean? I get to sit back now and because of, I mean, because of chance and Marco, like I made the most I've ever made in a month because the two of them, you know what I mean? And because they did the work that they were supposed to do. And I made a connection with Josh, which made a connection with Jay Daniel. And just because of your tenacity, you're connecting people all around you without even understanding like what you're doing. And the two of you had that, that idea just embedded into you. And I love it. I love it because, you know, when all the dust settles and everybody that came into, you know, whatever sales program, whatever training, when all the dust settles and they all quit, like who's going to be the ones who are still here? Like you said, they're going to quit. So who yeah. are going to be the ones who are still here? And it's not even about the money at this point. You know, it's not even about how much money you make. It's not about, you know, the records you set. It's about the lives that you touch, right? It's about the the reach that you have. And you don't get there without being tenacious. And I just love to see it. dude. Like, I mean, so when Jay Daniel and I were like, who should we have on? We should just have people on just to chill. I'm like, we got to have Chance and David. And we have to. Like, this is what sales is about. It's, it's about coming into something, using it as a vehicle to get somewhere else. It's Ooh. perfect. 
Speaking of that, so I know you just said it's not about the money, but let's make it about the money, dude. So I'm curious. Like, obviously, <laughs> you know, we're all in sales. We're on sales to make money, right? I'm curious. Are you guys doing anything? I, I know you mentioned like the offer that you're putting together, but um, what are your thoughts on like salespeople going out and, and making money from places outside of sales? Like, for example, you know, there's like Amazon FBA. You can invest money in different vehicles. Um, my personal favorite, fuck having a business. But, you know, like, <laughs> what are your thoughts on like sales reps making that transition? Yeah, man. Um, I appreciate your opinion, but I, I think if you're not using your wealth to build wealth, you're you're stupid, right? Like to to be one hundred percent honest with you, because I mean, something can happen tomorrow where we're not selling, right? If you, you have multiple streams of income, whether it be a business or not, I mean, you can make money tons of ways without being a business owner, right? Agreed. If if you're relying on just sales as your income, I mean, as nicely as I can put it, I just think you're not using your brain, right? Because at the end of the day, I mean, you can get to an accident, your offer can shut its doors. The last offer I was on, the one that um, Victor put me on, and this isn't saying anything bad because Victor, I made a shit ton of money there. I was always leading leading the team with Josh. They they brought in some new media buyers and it just tanked. We went from doing 600K a month to like 70K a month. So everybody dipped out, yeah. right? Yep. That can happen like that. It was six yeah. straight months of me making over 10 K to then I made six K and it was like, and it just went. And they, they offered me the uh, position as a lead closer. I took it a month in things were the same and I did bro. Cause the offer was just yep. down. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, I love it personally. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm saving up for um, real estate personally, like because mm -hmm. the industry that we're in, at least where I live, you're not going to get approved for any type of real estate loans without like 20% down because our, our income is so up and down. Uh, but that's, that's what I'm saving up for personally. I'll let David, I mean, take it from here. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I met the older Asian version of me. So he's a dad now. And <laughs> um, I mean, he's, he's, he's the most wealthy like sales rep that I've ever met that has, like in, in, in the amount of commissions that he's earning per month and he's branching out to, you know, there is, I'm not sure if this will get flagged or not, but there is only fans management for someone that has heard of it. it sounds a bit yes! safe, right? <laughs> only okay, fans. I don't, I don't approve. Continue. <laughs> uh, Amazon FBA. Like he, he's doing all of it because he's working on one of those offers and he's selling them and he's investing in the, them himself that has generated him like he, he's you know I, i'm not gonna say how much he makes but it's shy a little bit less of a million dollars a year yep from Dude. being a sales rep and transferring uh -huh. that wealth it's yeah. it, it's so amazing to see man and I, I i just love it bro my biggest regret and, and like my biggest regret in this space is spending all the fucking money that I was making from sales for the first year and a half, bro, on, on garbage. Like the last, let's say like six or seven months, bro, I've been, I've been investing everything into different vehicles, bro. And, and like now, if I were to stop selling, I'll make the same amount just from like investments, bro. And it's like, there is no security there. Your security is your skills. Yeah, but what if your offer tanks, right? Like, and you can network and set yourself up, but yeah, but like shit happens. What if you get sick, you know? Um, yeah. Putting your money to work for you, I think is the best and most underutilized like like concept in this space, in my opinion. Um, you know, obviously you have your risk management, read your books to understand it. Investing is a skill set, just like sales, right? But it's a big fucking deal, dude. Um, yeah. It's like My, going from yeah. fishing on your own, you know, and catching fish and being a great fisherman mm -hmm. to now buying more boats so that other fishermen go out and catch more fish than what you used to catch on your own. So now you get to sit back and just give people keys and they go out and catch the fish for you. That's what it's like when you invest your money somewhere else, when you it's take like the money and the skills. Personal pyramid scheme. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're <laughs> insulated. The bottom, you reap the rewards, right? You're insulated. Yeah. And people are doing it so many different ways, right? Like you mentioned OnlyFans management. I saw a YouTube video where this guy has never posted a video himself of himself on OnlyFans. He gets millions each year from people sending him their content. He posts, markets, and manages their content, gives them a small percentage. And that's what he's doing. And that's how he's making millions. Paid off his mom's house, paid all her medical bills off, all these things. 
you can hate on what he's doing all you want. But the guy used his brain and was like, okay, how can I take advantage of this market? Bro, you know what I mean? How can I take advantage of this? Money's money. As long as it's legal, I don't hate on anything. I got a buddy <laughs> who makes five figures a month through YouTube automation. Bro, he, yeah. he outsources. He pays like, I think it's like $30 a video or something. It's it's not his content. He doesn't edit it. He doesn't voice it. It's like these, I, I can't wrap my head around how it's possible, but he outsources it. He has a team that handles it all. He posts them and then he makes the money, bro. And mm -hmm. it's insane. But I, I want to backtrack real quick here. I thought of this. I wanted to talk about earlier. Um, You were talking about how the tenacity gets you connections, right? The offer I'm on right now, lead flows down. I'm not making the kind of money I want to make. I was looking elsewhere um, because of the skills that we said, my offer offered me a fat base to stay while they're ramping up ads. Like, hey, mm -hmm. we want to take care of you. Now, normally I would say no, but these guys have been partners for 20 years. This is their sixth offer. Their five before this one scaled to over a million dollars a month. These guys know what the mm -hmm. fuck they're doing. And then I also told them about me and David's business. And they said, hey, on top of that, if you ever need any help with anything, we'll be there to guide you. If you need help with this, you can help with that. You can use us as a beacon of support because we've, they're like, as humbly as we can say this, we've been there, done that. They got a private jet. This dude's got like six 74 inch monitors behind him in his office. Like they've got multiple houses. I'm like, dude, like, and it's, it's just the networking thing, right? Because I yeah. knew, a guy, knew a guy that got me on this offer. I'm not making the kind of money I want now, but because of everything on the back end and what we've talked about, I don't need to be making five figures in sales. Right. Because it's like, I mean, obviously we want to, right? Because mm -hmm. it shows the skill set, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. It's, it, it, we're, we're business owners, we're entrepreneurs, you know? Um, I think it, it's, you know, like 2D, like you play the old games, like, uh, what do you call that? Like Super Mario Bros., bro, where it's like a flat platform, you're kind of going, mm -hmm. right? And, and, then, and then you have like the 3D where it's a real world and there's different like angles and shit. Like, that's business, bro. Like, in, in straight up. Like that's a connection, dude. One connection to change your life. Like my buddy, like I I'm investing in a couple of different like projects and hedge funds and stuff. I told my buddy about it. He didn't have a dime. Hey, he was on one of our calls. I, I fucking love Travis. He's, he's, he's on, he's on a, you know, our podcast and he, he, a connection he has, he's like, Hey dude, like 50 grand. And the guy was like, sure, here, gave it to him. They invested it. He's, you know, he's not doing sales anymore. You know, he's, he's, he's doing something else. And so every single, like one connection could change your fucking life. Like, yeah, it's powerful. And Chance, you said something that is key. And I think that a lot of people would have missed it. So I'm going to bring it back up. But you said, normally I would leave, but they offered me a base. And these people know what they're doing. They're established. They've done this before. So this is only a matter of time. That's offer selection. You know what I mean? It's It's knowing when to jump off the ship. And I think a lot of people... We'll be like, oh, the leads are down. I'm not getting what I need. I'm out, right? But it's like, hold on, time out, time out. Let's look and see if this is something that can suit you. If it's not going to help you meet your goals, great. Of course, but, yeah. Yeah, but if your goal isn't, if you're not reliant on that, like you said, I'm not relying on it right now, but I know in the future, in the near future, it's going to be awesome. Like that's something to think about. And I think like with your guys' offer, I mean, this is kind of like pinpointing what you guys are talking about. Just the kind of, Let's make sure that you got what you need. And it's different for each individual, right? But let's make sure you got what you need so that way you can continue and see what happens. Because we've all been on those offers, right? Where she's like, hey, I don't think I don't think this is going to work for me. And that it doesn't the, work for you. The offers where they dangle the carrot. They're like, hey, it's yeah. coming. It's coming. 90 yeah. days later, it's coming. It's like, all right, dude. <laughs> like. Yeah. I know I'm I'm not that smart, but I know you can get something ramped up in 90 days, right? Like, yeah. hey, come on, when is it coming, right? And that's where we kind of got to in this offer. And they were like, hey, we know you're not making the kind of money you want. This is what we're willing to do. Uh, we want you to be around long term. We want you to be our sales manager once once everything's ramped up. Um, we'll give you the night to think about it. And I was like, I'm this is kind of funny. It's like I'm a closer. There is no think about it. Yes, let's let's, let's do this, right? Because I yeah. trust you guys. And like you said, man, yeah, it was um a lot of people presented that option would have been like, no, mm -hmm. right. I'll just go find an offer where I can make this immediately and not, not even think about the back end benefit of it. Like I wasn't thinking about the money then basically they were like, 
what do you need to pay your bills? I said, X amount. They said, we'll do this. So like, even my bills are paid, not including everything else. Right. Which Mm -hmm. is like, okay, that's, I'm chilling. And then plus commissions. Right. But in my mind and David, I hadn't brought this up with you yet. We were going to talk about this tomorrow in my mind. It's like, (laughs) these guys are multimillionaires. They've scaled five offers to a million dollars a month. Why wouldn't I stay here? Yeah. Like even if it's just for that. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Fun. <laughs> Sometimes you stay you should stay in a place for the added benefits other than money. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. 100%. Sometimes you should stay somewhere for the education that you get. Sometimes everybody you should stay somewhere for the connections that you get. All about money, bro. It's all yeah. like everybody I talk to. What did you do to get to 10K? What did you do to get to 10K? How can I make 10K? Like, mm-hmm. If all you're focused on is money, money's never gonna come. Right. All right. What's the saying with uh and and, and I'm sure YD YD knows it, but it's um like you you chase money or money run or something like that. Come on, man. You you know the quote. Scared I'm money sure. is yeah, scared money certainly doesn't make any money. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. like <laughs> it, it's so I mean you have this whole idea of like it, like relationships, right? Like if if you chase the money, that's all you get. And you may not get it, right? It's going to be mm-hmm. harder. If you chase the relationship, you get everything that comes with it. And money is just one thing. There's hundreds of things that are just as valuable, right? When you have a relationship, yeah. um, you know? So if if you truly add value and if you truly think of people as people, um, the, the leverage and, and the benefits are, are, you know, they're amazing and they can't be compared. Um, and that that's the higher level of, of like business, right? Like obviously like, you know, you if you can read books about billionaires, and they'll say, "Hey, I'm in this room, and I'm thinking, who does this person know that they, they that you know, who does this person know that I could potentially work with, that I could potentially connect somebody with, right?" But at the end of the day, like that, at the highest level, it's just it, it's just relationships, you know, and, and it's it's yeah. understanding your end goal. I think a lot of people too, like they don't have a goal, so they default to money, right? I don't know what I want, but I want to make 10k. I don't know what I want, but I want to make 10k. No, like, dude, like, if you're really clear on what you want, you can do shit like that, right? Like Chance probably wants to be significantly more wealthy than he is now. Of course. <laughs> you know, so being, being around people that are fucking wealthy is probably going to help, like, right? Especially- my two biggest goals are to retire my mom and my dad. And I've done the math with what my okay. dad needs to retire and what my mom needs to retire. I need over two and a half million dollars. Not going to do yeah. that making 10K a month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Maybe 20 years from now. But yeah. <laughs> by then, they're going to be retired anyway. So, yeah. You know what's funny? People chase the money, right? They're like, oh, like it's so powerful what you said. They don't have a goal, so they default to money. But they forget that money is a byproduct. Money is not the end goal. Money is not, it's not this, you know, it's not the end all be all. Money is a byproduct of what you do. Money is a byproduct of the work you put in, the skills you have, the connections you make, the relationships you make. So if you're chasing money and calling it a result, you're never going to get it. And people say, well, why aren't you going to get it? Because I chase money. Because money is not a, a result. Money is a byproduct. Money is what happens as a result of you getting something else, of you doing something else, of you accomplishing something else. So think about it from the basis standpoint. I need a job. I'm fresh up. I'm in high school. I need a job. What do I do? I go to McDonald's, right? I don't go to McDonald's, sign the contract, and they give me money. No, I go to McDonald's. I put in 40 hours a week, and then I get a check two weeks later. You know what I mean? So money is never, it's never been the result. It's always been the byproduct of the work you put in. It's always been the byproduct of the choices that you make. So people are like, oh yeah, I'm coming in. How do you make 10K? How do you make 10K? You're already not going to make it because you're not doing any work to get there. You're just looking at the result. You're looking at the byproduct. You're looking at the cars and the clothes and the shoes and the lifestyle but you don't see the backbreaking sweat and work that it get, takes to get there. You don't see the sleepless nights. You don't see the not being able to drive the car because you're working your butt off. You don't see like everything else that comes with that. All you're looking at is, oh yeah, I want a house in the lake. I'm like, okay, cool. You can get a house on the lake if you put the work in to get it. Because a house on the lake is a byproduct of the work you put in to get it. Exactly. Exactly, bro. No, 100%. And back to what Jay Daniel said real quick about spending your money on shit. I did that a little bit. I bought my dream car <laughs> um, and I've got a lake house, but um, thankfully um, I'm a pretty frugal guy. So um, I've been able to kind of stock away a lot of my money, but, but, but real quick here, what you said, man, it's crazy. You brought that up. Cause I talk about that on my calls with, w- with people, right? 
most people are at base camp, right? They're, they're in base camp. They're at the bottom of the mountain. They're chilling. That's fine. Right. Everybody else is down there. The few select actually make it to the top of the mountain. You don't just teleport and climb a mountain, right? Or else climbing Mount Everest, Mount Everest wouldn't be a big fucking deal. Right. There's all those bumps and bruises and you're going to fall down and it's a huge climb to the top. Right. And yes, every checkpoint counts. Right. But once you make it to the top is when you can say, OK, now what's next? Right. And it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy you brought that up, Victor, because it's I, I feel like a lot of people come in and whether it be because of marketing way over promising this world, they think 10K is like right around the corner because it's what they hear. Like 10K in 30 days of your money back. And it's like, OK, so. Anzi scheme like what's going on here Is that... <laughs> but yeah. yeah and that it's hilarious because there's a lot of people who who will never get to that point they'll never get to the point where they make any significant money in sales because they're chasing the money you know there's there's i like to take concepts and because there's nothing new under the sun right there's nothing here that we haven't seen before that hasn't played out in nature or in science or in life. Um, and I like to take concepts and, and remove them outside of, of sales and pull something from them. There's a, there's a documentary on Netflix, um, seven peaks, seven peaks, nine peaks, seven peaks. It's about a Sherpa who his whole job was to help people get to the top of Everest. And he said, you know what? It's always this European guy who gets credit for climbing Everest never the 10 Sherpas that helped him get up the mountain, right? So he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the best Sherpas that I know, my guys, my homies, and we're going to climb the tallest peaks in the world, all seven of them or nine of them, whichever number seven or nine. And he, he's no funding. Nobody believes in him. Nobody's going to video him. Netflix doesn't give him a, give him a, you know, a, a movie or anything like that. He does it himself. He takes a camera, him and his boys, they climb all seven of these peaks. Now, Everest is like the fifth tallest in the world or something like that. So they climb all mm. these other peaks and do Everest on like the third day. And then like two days later, they climbed another one and they're doing these, these crazy. crazy feats together. But it's, it's the, the mindset that we've been talking about. It's, I want to achieve greatness. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put in the work. No, everybody can doubt me. Everybody can, can come tag onto my story later. But for right now, I'm going to be tenacious and I'm going to go after it. I'm going to put in the work. And after that comes the glory, right? I get to plant my flag on, do something nobody else has ever done, right? So now he's got this documentary because he filmed it himself. Netflix is paying him a buttload of money because they want the rights to it now, right? Mm -hmm. They want the rights to it. So he made a bunch of money off of that. So all these Sherpas now who climb these mountains with him, they're all set for life now. Because every time someone streams this, this, you know, this Netflix video, they get paid. And it's like, how does that happen? It takes one, it, it start at base camp, sure. But you're going to hit every single peak. You've got to be tenacious. You've got to think forward. You've got to think about the outcome of what you're trying to get. You got to think about your goal. And if your goal is to climb one mountain, fine, you can do that. You know, but if your goal is to, beat every single thing that comes in your path and be a boss and look back at life and say, I accomplished something. Then it's going to take some tenacity. Yeah. Even taking action. Cause before you said they um, didn't have the Netflix sponsorship before they even made the documentary, but they wanted to reheap the rewards. Even, even at that moment, you know, being declined and doing it, it's like, oh man, this guy has something in him that I haven't, you know, seen yet. So it's um just going through or past all the other limiting beliefs, which I believe chance uh you spoke on with whenever you jumped into remote states with um, you know, the people around you being stuck in nine to five. Um, not not nothing, you know, ill against them, but that like mindset kind of like was brought up brought onto you. Uh, when it came down to like your apartment, the condo, the amount of money you, you had left to like sustain yourself forward. Maybe you can add a little bit more details to that um, than I can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm um, sorry if you guys hear my dog whining. I think she has to go out, but if that's fine, my fault. Um, but yeah, man, so 
basically I was, I was faced with, with two options, right? One is continue to be burnt out and tired of working in corporate America with the weight on my shoulders of, I have 40 more years of this, right? Or um, I could take the leap, right? And I, I got on a call with JD and he kind of laid it out as you've got enough money to, to live for a couple of months, right? I'll, I'll break this down into any way that makes sense for you. Um, and part of it was me and JD really clicked. Um, so he was like, I'm going to do, do everything I can to, you know, get you to where you need to go. And essentially it was make online sales work in two months or lose my car, lose my apartment and probably lose my relationship. Cause my ex fiance, um, she thought I was crazy for, for doing this and was like, if you put us in a spot where we're going to lose our stuff, then our relationship's over. Right. So, um, I had to make it work, man. And, and, and thank God for, for JD and, um, everybody else inside UCM. Cause I joined, it was, it was a weird time. I, I joined right when everybody was on like Christmas break. So I had like two or three weeks straight of just content of that. I consumed, I was watching it at work. Right. I was, because I had, I had kind of already mentally let go of the job. So I wasn't really performing and it's corporate America. I was getting paid anyways, if I was performing or not. So, um, I had a bunch of content to consume. I took a bunch of notes. I applied it. JD opened a door for me to scaling with systems and, I mean, the rest is history, man. I made like 7K my first month, 9K my second month, and 11K my third month. And um, I was obviously able to pay my bills and do a lot more and quit my job. And I mean, I quit my job before I even started on scaling, essentially, because scaling wanted me to go full time. And I was like, all right, I'm going to put my back against the wall. And if this works, it works. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't, right? Yep. A lot of people would have probably settled. I mean, you, you had a good life. Right, a job, yeah, you know, girlfriend, like apartment, like 67, 67,000 something a year. I mean, that's pretty good, man. I mean, my my ex was making like forty k. We were up into the six figure combined. We were living in a luxury high rise condo with fifteen foot ceilings. It's a good life. I could have been chilling, right? Yeah. Uh, but I wanted more, more not money per se. Obviously, money's great, but I wanted more out of life itself, and wasn't able to do that working nine hours a day. You know what's powerful about that? You may not even know this, but after you guys talked, you talked to JD and you guys, you were in, I think for, was it like two weeks before you got with scaling? Two to three weeks? I joined December, like late December, and I got the offer from scaling in late January, but I didn't yeah. start until like the second week of February because they, yeah. they, they were ramping up ads, but yeah. Right. So JD had just got on with scaling. And he was like, I'm, I bought the program. I got a, I got an in, right? He's like, I, am, I need to put somebody in here. And he's hitting up the group chat. And he's like, guys, do you know anybody who can go in this offer? I got some people in mind, but do you know anybody? And I think he had already had you in mind, but we had just had got off a conversation, you and I. And I said to him, I was like, you know what? I think chance is perfect. And he was like, I had the same idea. And then it was like, done. Right. And the, the cool thing about that is if it wasn't for the fact that you took that time, consumed all that content, like put the work in, like made yourself like that t the tenacity was already building. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for that, that shift that you did mentally, this would be a whole different story. You know what I mean? And I think what a lot of people don't get is they'll still hear something like that and they'll be like oh yeah chance you know he got connected and it was just because he got connected and kept getting connected but no you got connected for a reason right and it's because of the work you put in and because of the effort that you put into your development and a lot of people will sit back and say well everybody around me is nine to fivers no one's ever done this before i've never had this type of this type of growth in my life. I've never seen it before. This is all foreign to me. This is strange. Um, my family's never made anything. I'll never make anything. This is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And they would have got stuck there. But you said, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm going to put the time and effort into developing myself. And from there, I'm going to grow. Right. And because you opened yourself up, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, was like, all right, bro, got you. Right. You open yourself up to this. I'm going to show you what it looks like, you know, mm -hmm. and you put that work in and then all of a sudden it leaves. 
That's the thing about action, right? It leads to something else and it leads to something else. And there's more and more and more and more. The more action you put in, the more momentum you build, the faster you go and the more you consume and the more you're capable of consuming. Oh man, I agree. It's like a snowball, right? It's going to start small at the top of the mountain, but the harder you push it and the faster you push it, the bigger it's going to get, right? However, that, that snowball... When you stop, it doesn't keep rolling down the mountain. I know it kind of defies physics a little bit, but that uh, that snowball is tied to you. When you stop, it stops. Mm-hmm. You got to keep moving forward for it to move forward, right? And um, one thing you said there, I, I just want to add to it r- real quick, Victor. Um, I I could have stayed, right? My dad, he's a very successful nine to five guy. He's a I don't even know what he is anymore. He's some big wig in, in engineering. Makes like I don't want to put his numbers out there. Multiple six figures a year. But he's miserable, man. He hates his job. He hates driving to work. The commute's terrible. He doesn't like his boss. He doesn't like the hours. He doesn't like, you know, having to work somewhere else and work for somebody else. And it's like all this stuff that's piled on. And that's one of the biggest things that led me to just say, F it, man, because he wasn't, nobody burned the boats. You see him, right? Burn the boats. I had to burn almost every single boat I had because nobody supported me. They were like, dude, that's fake. That's a scam. Nobody makes money online. Like I, if I could, if I could tell you how many times I had somebody say, is that legit though? Like, like, are you sure this is legit and you can make money? And it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to do it and then prove you guys wrong. And now on the flip side, um, my dad doesn't shut up about how proud he is of me because I paid my own path. I, I, I don't have to work for somebody else. I can work when I want to. I make three times as much money as he did my age. All these things he's super proud of me for. And I was like, see see what happens when you when you take uncomfortable action, Dad, when you go outside the norm, <laughs> right? It's, it, it's one of those, I'm, I'm happy he supports me, but also uh, I told you so to a guy I, I look up to a lot, but mm-hmm. it, it feels nice to be like, got you. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, yeah. Dude, you know, you know what I love about like personal stories like this too? Like it's so relatable, bro. Like, uh, like I can you like literally if you read Think and Grow Rich, right? They talk about the whole like burning desire, but that that's that's something you're reading out of a book, right? Like you have to live it, you know. And it's like, like, dude, say like totally different scenario, right? Um, you know, I was I was you know separated from a relationship, and I had all this stuff happen. I was I was in jail, like it was crazy, right? But same thing dude i was fucking going through like the some of these courses 10 hours a day bro talking to all these companies going super fucking hard you know and it's like anything less than that you're just not gonna fucking make it you know um it, and that's huge bro that's that's really fucking huge um i'm sure we all had like that moment right where it's like fuck this shit you know fuck this shit up you're just going and going and going and going right <laughs> Bro, I almost feel like you have to, right? You, you, I forget who said it. It's a motivational speaker. I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, but he's talking about the jump, right? If, if you want to be mm-hmm. successful, you have to jump. Every successful person has jumped. I think mm-hmm. it was Steve Harvey, actually. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it was Steve Harvey. Yeah, he's talking about like, you know, the, the parachute might not pull right away. You're going to bump yeah. into the wall. You're going to get bumps. You're going to get bruises. But eventually, the parachute's going to open and you're going to be soaring, right? But you'll never soar if you never jump, right? That's the thing. You have to jump. I mean, there's no way around it. So, nah, it's 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 huge, man. It's huge. And bro, serial entrepreneurs, the guys that crush it, they just fucking jump all the fucking time, bro. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> bro, Elon Musk, you saw that jump, bro? But he has all the money in the world. He's fulfilled all his dreams, bro. Bro, he, he said, you know what? <laughs> His, his net worth like got cut in half or something, and he's still a hundred billionaire. Yeah, like dude, dude lost half. Can't his even fathom and, that. And, and it's like, okay, I can still you know buy the world essentially. <laughs> it's crazy. Bro. No, but that's neighborhood. No, no, but dude, that that's a jump. Like, bro, yeah. like if you like, like think, like think about that. And, and I looked into his story. There's a reason for it, right? Like, I, you know, like, like he, he took the vaccine. He got really sick. His family got sick. People died, whatever the fuck, right? Censorship. But like that, that was a jump, bro. Like that was a big fucking jump from a guy that like now he's in, in, in the sights of some of the most evil people in the fucking planet. Yeah. You know, he didn't have to do that. So I'm saying like, the, the if you want to be a, an entrepreneur because you hear that a lot right i want to be an entrepreneur that's being able to jump and fucking make what nobody thinks is possible happen and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again you know 
and, and that's um so so victor you were talking about like to be successful it's not just money right it's i think it's who you become bro i think jim Rohn is fucking right it's who you're becoming um mm-hmm. like i it, it is 100 who you're becoming and, and that's like the biggest fruit of it because like you know, we're gonna fucking die anyway right like you know what i mean like like a big thing is like and, and that's the next level because a lot of the times bro like a lot of these opportunities that's that are presented to us we would waste them if you weren't the person that could actually handle it and make it happen, dude, I like, and, and bro, I've wasted opportunities. I, you know, I think oh, I yeah. talked about it, hey, bro. I, I had this, um, I had this, this fucking NBA, uh, potential NBA contract when I was trying to run a marketing agency and I fucked that shit up so bad, bro. Cause I was a dumbass 19 year old that just wasn't, you know what I mean? I hadn't leveled up as a person to be able to handle that. And, and, and so I, I think that's the most important part of the, that. That's what you'll look back on too, bro. The experiences, like who you became, um, the shit that you did when nobody was watching, you know, yeah. that that's, that's the game. You know, what's funny though. If you've never jumped before, you're terrified. <laughs> Cause that first jump is the oh, hardest man. thing you will ever do in your entire life. Oh dude. You know, you know, you know, you know what people were really terrified. The people that jumped, but they kind of didn't jump and it was a mm-hmm. total shit show. And yeah. so now they have PTSD mm-hmm. and they, oh, they yeah. try, and they keep kind of jumping and yeah. fucking everything up. They're not jumping. They're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you yeah. go to jump, but you fall off and you get caught on the stick that's like hanging, right? And you're just sitting there hanging, <laughs> looking down. That's the kind of jump. I, I will say, though, um, to to give JD a shout out, he's really fucking good at what he does because yeah. um, he, he made it easy. I mean, I literally signed up to exactly. get like 75% of the money I had to my name over three months, obviously, or four months. I think, I think it was like a, like a four month payment plan. Uh-huh. Um, but we were on the call and he's like, yeah, so now we just fill it out and da, 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 da. And I was like, Holy shit. Like we're, we're actually doing this. Okay. Yeah. But you know and- what though? That's not even where you jumped. You jumped in the decision in your head to get better. That is true. No, that's true. That's true. Because I was, yeah, yeah. Backtrack 20 seconds here. Um, backtrack. I, I forgot a piece of the story, right? When I, the reason I was looking to get out of corporate America, it was kind of, um, it was kind of selfish money wise, but it was also time, but I'd hit a cap in the physical sales role I was in, right? I was hitting every bonus. I was doing everything I could. So I, I hit a cap and I was looking up what's next in sales. I, I came across the high ticket sales term. Then I got into your guys' free Facebook group. And then I joined UCM. So you're right. You're right. Yeah, that was that jump was made prior to that call. And that's why probably it was a lot easier because I was already I was like, okay. Yeah. And a lot of people, they'll start. The reason why they fall and land on the stick on the edge of the cliff and they're hanging is because they hesitate. Mm -hmm. They stutter step the jump. They 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 freak out because they see the open space before them and they don't understand that. No, I'm jumping over this space and creating something else for myself. I'm creating my own landing spot here, but they jump and they hesitate, they stutter step and then they fall. So when you talk about, oh yeah, I got into UCM and it was like, no, you jumped way before that. When you made up the decision, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to take this opportunity and I don't care where it comes from, what happens. I'm going to use this to get better. And if people don't realize, I I mean, I had a call today. This lady was like, your program is perfect for me. Um, I have the money to do this. I just am adamant that I will not buy something on the first day. She's like, so I'm not going to buy it. There's nothing you can say to me right now. You might as well just stop talking to me. I was like, oh, so if I talk to you tomorrow, then you're hundred percent in. And she's like, yes. And so, you know, you break down all of those things, you go through all of the objections and all of that. And she was just like, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And basically it was like, I'm off this call, but I will talk to you tomorrow. My thought process in that is there's so many people like that. There's so many people who know that this is perfect for them, that this is something they need to do. They need to grow. They need to explore. They need to get out. They need to create something. They need to X, Y, Z but they're so stuck in their own head that they're just afraid to do it. And that's why you fall. Ooh, I made a post about this today, bro. That's crazy. I Um, I saw that. dude. That's why you fall. It's not jumping. Doesn't necessarily negate that you're going to fall. You know, jumping means you're going to be airborne. Yes. But you don't have to fall when you jump, you know, you fall because 
you're being you're you're not purposeful in your job right no agree man and and one Mm -hmm. more thing i want to add this um this this lady that i've been working on for i think this is like day number six now i've talked to her multiple times and i've i've done the ultimatum here of kind of stepping away but her biggest thing is is nobody supporting her right so i i also believe if if you're not willing to burn the boats then it's going to be like you try and jump and however many people even if it's one person or five people are holding you they're like literally holding you from jumping right the the more people that don't support you the harder it's going to be to rip away from that yeah. right you've got to turn around and not literally burn the people yeah. but that's right yeah take your shirt off grease yourself up and jump exactly exactly <laughs> dude some crazy shit happens when you truly burn the boats like all of a sudden you just figure shit out. You just become a problem solver. You're like, okay, cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm a lazy fuck. I've been a lazy fuck all my life. It's probably not going to change. So I'm going to start to get these people to do this. I'm going to do this, bro. I had a guy that I would meet up with at fucking 5. AM. Right. And, and like, if I didn't show up, I would have to pay him 50 bucks. I had, I had somebody where if I didn't post a YouTube video every fucking day by 9 AM, I would have to pay him 50 bucks, bro. It, 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 and that created so much consistency for me. Cause I knew, okay, I'm not going to fucking like, you know, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm fucking, I'm lazy by nature. Right. So you, 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 when you truly burn the boats, you think about all the ways that you could fail and you set contingency plans, the prospects that we talk to that fucking crush it. They don't just bend over and take it. Yeah. I'll buy, come on, hit me with your sales dick. Right. No, but they also don't like, like say some bullshit. Like, Oh, let me think about it in a week. <laughs> right. They, they, ha- they're, they're, they're in this nice middle ground, bro, where they're like, they're analyzing all the possible ways that they could fail and they're, they're, they're protecting themselves. What about, what about in this situation? What about in this situation? What if I'm stuck here? How are they going to help me here? Are you sure? You don't sound so sure. Can you help me? Right. Those are the people that fucking crush it, dude. Cause that they dream have a realist critic. Yeah. Yeah. They have their sound fucking decision-making process and they're all into making it happen. They're just making sure that you can fucking help them. And, um, and we got to hold people to that, bro. Like we're going to think about it. Give me a week. Like, dude, what I'll do in sales calls is I'll say, like, that's great. But can I tell you something? Like, you said you want to be this person. Let's lay this out real quick. I see this person every fucking day, and they're looking for a very clear plan on what's going to get them to their goal. What are the actual obstacles besides you pissing yourself scared that are actually, like, you feel preventing from getting there and have that dialogue, right? Like, that needs to happen. And you need to have that with yourself and every decision that you make, or you're not going to make it. Because there's so many things that could fuck you up, bro. There's so many things that could fuck you up. And like, if you think that the salesperson on the other end of the line is going to save you, bro, like they care, but they don't, they met you 20 minutes ago. They met you 35 minutes ago, you know, like, you know, I, I think that's so important because it doesn't matter how ethical we are, bro. Like people got to have their own values. They got to have like their own goals and they got to be clear on where they're headed. And um, if they're not, our job is to fucking call them out on that shit. Like, hey, buddy. Bro, responsibility. I love. I, I don't know why people are are so scared of it, and it's it, it's part of my sales style that I that I like to to teach. Mm-hmm. I love being uncomfortable, bro. I I love asking the questions that most salespeople aren't willing to ask, and I love. I, I don't want to put it like this, but I love being a dickhead, right? I mean that that pattern interrupt. A lot of people are used to sales reps begging them to close, right? I I had a guy. Um, I closed him on a follow up call. And he basically said that he he knows that I get paid. Da, 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 da. And I was like, dude, I'm I'm set financially with or without you. Right. Like this is about you and this is about your transformation. And if you're ready and willing to to take that jump. Right. And it was it, it was one of those pattern interrupts. Of like, dude, I don't give a fuck if you join or not. Like, obviously, I do. And I want you to because of the person you're going to become but financially. I'll make a thousand dollars. OK, woo. Awesome. Like, fuck, that's, 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 that's not going to stop the lottery for me, bro. Like, <laughs> relax on that. And um, yeah, no, and real quick, one more thing I want to add, and then I do have to jump off this, guys. I'm scared my dog's going to fucking take a dookie in my house here. <laughs> uh-huh. But um, it's back to the burning the boats real quick. I-, I wanted to add something that you talked about there, Jay Daniel. If you burn the biggest boats, you'll be surprised how little fucks you give moving forward. Right. Like the biggest and hardest boats, the prettiest boats, the ones that you've been collecting for years, call it your mom, your dad, whatever it is. You burn those boats if they don't support you, of course. Right. Don't just be burning boats to burn boats. Right. You burn those boats. You, what else is there to care about? Right. Other than getting yeah. to your goal. you're like, OK, fuck, I just I just burned this this boat I've been collecting for 24 years. Right. My my prized possession. 
I don't care about anything else anymore, but reaching the top of the mountain. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll wrap it up with that guys. I mean, I have appreciated having both of you on and, and we will co-mingle in the future more and more, but dude, fucking, it, it's just fun to have two people who are on it and just on their game and making sure that, you know, they reach their top potential. And I love having you guys on. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. And uh, yeah, if you're, if you're listening and you're watching and you know, you're like, man, I, I really resonate with what these guys are talking about. Go check them out. Check out their podcast. Check out their offer if it suits you. As always, you can hit us up on YouTube, salesathomepodcast.com. And, you know, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's where we are. And we would love to hear you guys. We'd love to hear from you guys, answer any questions you may have. But until next time, guys, peace. Peace. Peace out.